If you're looking for an inexpensive Core XY machine to play around with, stick around, because this machine may be for you. This is the KLP-1, a 500 millimeter per second monster from King Rune. And it's only $379. I know, right? Crazy. This machine is going to be a tinker's delight. It's going to be for people who want to really play with the machine, who want access to a Core XY machine at a really low price. But let me explain what Core XY is for those people who don't know, who might be watching this, who might be interested. Core XY is basically just a different motion system. So in, in a bed slinger, which is a, the Cartesian style 3D printer uh, that I kind of have over here behind me, that is where the uh, Y axis moves back and forth. That's the build plate. It actually moves forward. It moves backward. Uh, the print head moves on the X. And of course, uh, the gantry on the Z goes up and down. In a Core XY design, for the print head to move in any given direction, it requires two motors to work in tandem to move that uh, that head. And it's a much more efficient motion system, and it's a little bit more accurate. And of course, you get some speed out of it as well, which is why we see these crazy speeds at a Core XY machines. Now it's running Clipper, and Clipper has been kind of a fringe kind of firmware for 3D printers for quite some time, but it has been known to be the firmware uh, of those who want to tinker, those who want to play with uh, some kind of edge features, some of that, that bleeding edge technology. As I mentioned before, this printer can print in upwards of 500 millimeters per second, which is darn fast. You're mostly going to be printing on this machine in, in anywhere from around 200 millimeters per second up to about 350 millimeters per second. And for such a tiny machine, this thing is one chunky boy. It weighs 30 pounds, and yet it's only like 13 inches deep I think it's 16 inches wide and it's about 15 inches tall. So that is one heavy, heavy machine. It's such a small, compact, like, form factor. Assembly was pretty easy. Um, pulling it out of the box, throwing it up on the bench was relatively simple. There were about four panels, I think, that we had to put together. There are two side panels. These are darkened acrylic panels. Put the side panels on. Then it was just assembling the front door, putting the knob on it and attaching it to the machine. And of course, the top lid on the machine. I do have one complaint, though, here before we go any further. That top lid rests so close to the hot end that when it actually is closed, it's resting on the wire harness that runs to the hot end and the PTFE tube. So printing with it closed, you can see that it's already starting to leave marks on the lid. And that's going to be something that's going to have to be addressed, I think, at, at, at some point. But mostly, leave the lid open. That's what I've been doing. Um, and let it flop back, and it kind of rests on top of the spool holder on the back. But ultimately, if you're printing PLA, you're going to have that open anyway. But do know that if you're printing things like ABS, and you're printing things like ASA or nylons, and that door is closed, understand that that's, good. that's going to be rubbing on the inside. Also, when it comes to loading the filament, uh, because that door is closed, it actually makes the PTFE kind of bend at a really kind of sharp angle. And I found that I couldn't actually load filament until I opened up the lid, straighten that PTFE tube, and then I was able to feed filament in and load it. Before we get too far, let me thank Polymaker. They are the generous sponsor of today's video, and they sponsor all of our content here on YouTube and on Twitch. All this filament on the wall behind me, that's Polymaker. I'll have their link on the screen and in the description below. Please uh, help support our content go check them out. And while you're over there, why don't you go and check out LM Sparkle Green, which is the official filament of the LM Show. And uh, it is a PLA Pro with glitter in it. And uh, it's kind of perfect for Christmas trees. And it's the Christmas season. But go check it out. Um, every single one of these spools that you pick up helps support our content. Thank you. The hot end is a direct drive all metal hot end that reaches a temperature of 300 C and it comes stock with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This machine being enclosed and with a temperature of 300 C can print PLAs, it can print uh, TPUs, PETGs, ABSs, ASAs, nylons. It can pretty much print all of those basic and advanced filaments. And I think that's going to be one of the selling features, right? So it prints all of those fantastic filaments but at a price point of $379, which is pretty incredible. I'm liking the direction this stuff's going. The build plate is, eh, it's relatively small, but you really can't complain. That goes along with the territory of having, a, a, you know, a, a relatively small footprint, but it's 210 millimeters cubed. So just to give you uh, kind of like scale, a Prusa Mini is 180 millimeters cubed. So the build volume is going to be just a little bit larger than that in every direction, 
but understand that the majority of people who are 3D printing can get away with printing inside of 180 millimeter build volume. Most prints fit within that, so don't let that scare you off. The build plate reaches a temperature of 100 C and it comes with a flexible PEI uh, removable sheet. Auto bed leveling is done with a mesh type system and uh, you can manually run that and it'll just go across the build plate and uh, get that mesh and make those calculations for you to get a nice smooth even first layer. Now let's talk about King Rune for a moment. King Rune has been around since 2015 and they make more than just 3D printers. They make filament and they make accessories. In fact, one of the accessories that they make is a filament dry box. And uh, we're gonna take a look at that along with the printer today uh, in this video. This is King Rune's filament dry box. It's basically a dry cereal box with a rubber gasket on the top. And it's got a PTFE pass-through on the rear, a PTFE pass-through on the top. It has a hygrometer that you can install. And it also has room for a couple of desiccant packs in the bottom, holds one kilogram spools, and it does use an aluminum roller uh, to hold that spool in there to, to make everything kind of spin nice and freely so there's no drag. These would be the perfect filament storage uh, in a moist environment, especially if you had shelves. Like if you had the shelves behind me and you wanted to stack all your filament, um, I can only imagine how cool it would be to have a stack or a line of these filament dry boxes on it. So thank you, King Rune, uh, for not only sending us over the dry box to take a look at, but generously providing this KLP1 for us to uh, have for free to share with our audience. And of course, I'll have a link to the filament dry box and the KLP1 on the screen here and uh, in the description below. Now, because it is Clipper, when we work at speeds like this, we have to have some sort of input shaping. Now, what is input shaping? Input shaping is essentially making calculations to account for the vibration of the resonance in the machine when the print head is moving at a very fast rate. Input shaping can be performed in the configuration on the printer itself. You're just going to go into the settings and you're going to tell it to automatically do it. Uh, it's loud. Matter of fact, I want to say that the, this calibration process is the loudest of any of the Core XY machines that I've used. Um, that thing can really hum. But um, it is it, it is pretty decent um, and then it saves those settings and then you can print and well, there you go. Now, the interface itself is a 3.5 inch touch screen and it does come with a stylus. Um, of course, it is a resistive type touchscreen, so um, pushing with your finger, you can get kind of mixed results. I found that, of course, the stylus is the best way to use it. And it's also positioned inside the 3D printer. And I've seen other reviews, and they talk about that being inside the printer as a problem. I actually find it's kind of nice. It kind of keeps the machine, the aesthetic, really clean and simple. Um, I understand that if you're printing with a ABS or nylon or things like that, and you want that door closed that you're letting the heat out if you want to touch the interface, which can be an issue. But I would just say use the Clipper web interface uh, fluid uh, to do that. That's what I would do. Um, but I actually felt that it's kind of nice to have that interface in there. The stylus is easy to use and uh, I don't know, I kind of like it. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe. We are a small channel and it would help us out a lot. Also, if you'd like to be a YouTube member and help support our content, we'd love to have you. Click on that little join button down below. The machine itself is pretty loud. Noise really doesn't bother me that much, but I did have this machine out in the living area, um, had it sitting on a table, and I did come and power it off. I found that looking over at that machine, I thought, my gosh, that thing is loud. The cooling fan is a single cooling fan on the hot end. I would say that if I had any advice to give to King Rune on this particular machine, I would probably uh, upgrade the cooling. The, the Having that single fan is just not enough, and you'll see in some of the prints that the cooling just can't reach around um, on the back side, and, uh, and that, that causes some, some cooling issues. Um, ideally, I'd like to see cooling uh, either on the front and back or at least on, on both sides. As far as slicing goes, Orca Slicer, fantastic slicer. If you've used any of the bamboo machines, and you're going to be uh, familiar with Orca Slicer, great slicer, full of features. And uh, you're going to get the profiles for the King Rune KLP1 on the King Rune website. There's going to be a link there that you're going to be able to click, and that'll take you to a, basically a post that has all of the profiles um, that you can install on Orca Slicer. It's really easy. Once you open up Orca Slicer, you're just going to go reach up. I think it's to file. You're going to hit import, and you're going to select profiles, and you're just going to drag all those little profiles in. You send your prints to the machine with a USB key. You can walk them over. Or, or of course, the machine does have Ethernet on it, and uh, it does connect over Wi-Fi. I did see that there were instructions that you had to go in and edit the configuration file on the USB key and put it in the machine and all that. That's not necessary. 
uh, in the Clipper interface, you can just go right in there and attach it to your Wi-Fi network, type in your password and it connects. It's pretty simple. Now, as far as print results, my initial results, I want to say were kind of mixed. I was not getting super fantastic results, which is not to be expected from a $379 machine. But I do think at $379, the way that it's built, the hardware that's in it, I mean, this, this thing's built so strong. It's built so well. The third time that I ran in the input shaping uh, calibration, I got the best results. And that can also come just simply because the machine uh, being shipped, uh, belts being tight, everything needs to kind of loosen up in there a little bit. And uh, But I did start to get some better results. There is still some ringing, but uh, I could probably spend quite a bit more time tuning and uh, remove all those completely. But that's why I am calling this machine the perfect machine for people who want to tinker and play. You are getting a solid Core XY Clipper 3D printer for $379. And this machine is going to be a fun, fun machine for those of you who want to tinker, those of you who want to mod, or those of you just who just want to experience one of these really fast machines at a super affordable price. In summary, I'd have to say that uh, I'm pretty impressed. What a fun little machine. The aesthetic is just gorgeous. It's super compact. It's a solid machine. If, of course, a novice can use it, that's no questions about that. But I'd have to say, though, that I think as far as being an introductory machine or for someone who's knows nothing about 3D printing and this is their first experience, I'd probably say this machine would not be for them unless they're more of a technical type person or they really want to get their hands deep into 3D printing. Then I would say it would be a great machine for that. But I would say that this is going to be a great moderate to advanced level 3D printer, people who want to tinker are gonna love this. And I think this machine is going to be for you. And before we go, I wanna give a massive shout out to our YouTube members and to our patrons. Thank you so much for your support. You are what make this possible. And as full-time content creators, that means a lot. So thank you so much. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed our content and we will see you on the next one.